everyone! In this video, I'd like to show you how to calculate the pH for a weak acid solution. So before we get started on an example, there's just a few things we want to make sure we're totally clear on. So the first thing is, is that the concentration of the weak acid that we initially put into the solution is going to be much, much greater than the concentration of the H plus produced. So you cannot use the concentration given for the acid as the value of H plus in your calculation. So what you're going to need to do is determine the equilibrium concentration for your H+. Then the last thing you need to know is that when you're calculating pH, that uh, equation is the pH is equal to the negative log of H+. Okay, so let's take a look at this calculation. So if we read the question, it says, calculate the pH for a one molar solution of hydrofluoric acid, and then we're also given a Ka value. So first we want to pull out the relevant pieces of information. So if we take a look over here, we're told that we're looking for the pH. So it's always good to know what's my goal. We're also told that we have a one molar solution of HF. So the first thing we need to recognize is that HF is a weak acid. One, we know it's not on the strong acid list of seven that we have. And additionally, we know because we're given a Ka less than one that it has to be a weak acid as well. So that means I can't just plug in this one molar for the concentration of H+. I need to figure out what the concentration would be at equilibrium. In order to do that, we need to use an ice chart. So the first thing in an ice chart is to write up the reaction. So we'd have HF plus H2O is in equilibrium with, so we know this is the acid, so that will be handed over to water, which is behaving like the base, and we have F minus left over. And then we write I, C, E. So I is for initial concentrations, C is for the change, and E is for the equilibrium value. So over here we know the initial, it's given, it's 1.00 molar. Now remember, the state of matter over here for water is a liquid, and liquids do not factor into equilibrium calculations. And then because we know when you first put in the HF, we don't have a concentration of either of those, so these are going to start out at zero. Next, you think about the direction that the reaction is going to move. Is it going to move forward or is it going to move backwards? Because equilibrium reactions can move in both directions. So we know if we have nothing here, we can't possibly go in that direction. So we have to move forward. What that means is we're going to lower the concentration of HF, so that has a minus, and we're going to add to the concentration of hydronium and fluoride. But by how much? So in this case here, we use the coefficients in front of the variable. So in this case, they're all one, so they're all going to change by one x amount. If there was, for example, a two here, then it would change by two x amount. So I'm going to use up some x amount of concentration here. And because there's a one to one mole ratio, I'm going to make x amount there. One to one mole ratio, I'm going to make x amount there. And then at equilibrium, I just have to add this up. So I have 1.00 minus x, x, and x. So now I can take this information, use the Ka expression and the Ka value to solve for the value of x. Let's take a look at how we do that. So here's the data that we've pulled from the ice chart. We know that the equilibrium concentration of HF at equilibrium is 1 molar minus x. x we don't know yet. We know that the concentration of H3O plus formed is X, and the concentration of F minus formed is X. So now what we're going to do is plug that information into the expression for Ka and solve for X, and there we'll have the number we need. So if we take a look at it, we first want to develop our expression for Ka. So now remember, when we're talking about K values, it's always product concentrations over reactant concentrations. So if I take a look at this, I have the concentration of H3O plus, this would be at equilibrium because we're talking about K, times the concentration of F minus. And now I'm going to divide that by only the concentration of HF. I am not going to include the value of H2O because H2O is a liquid. And when we're talking about our K expressions, we never include solids and we never include liquids, only aqueous and gaseous substances. So now what I can do is plug in the information that I have up here. So I know that at equilibrium, the concentration of hydronium is X, and the concentration of fluoride is X. And if I divide that now, that would be divided by the concentration at equilibrium of HF. I was also given in the question the value for the Ka, which is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. Now I'm ready to solve for X. 
Okay, so now I've taken our expression and I've rewritten it here, and we're pretty much ready to solve for x. So now there are two approaches to this. The first one is we could go ahead and multiply this whole thing out and we'd get a quadratic, and then to solve for x we'd have to use the quadratic formula. More often though, what we're going to have happen is we're going to make an assumption. So the first thing to remember is that this Ka value tells us something about our acid. It tells us, because it's so small, that the acid really doesn't dissociate that much. So to kind of appreciate that number, just remember that this would be written out where there were three zeros in front of that seven. So this is a very, very small number. The ratio of product to reactant is tiny. So what we're going to do then is assume that this initial concentration of one is going to be pretty much equal to 1 minus however much was used up, because a very, very small amount of it was used up. So if we make this assumption, we would rewrite this as Ka is equal to x times x over 1, which is equal to 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. And now I've really simplified things for myself. So if I multiply this up, essentially what I'm going to do is take the square root of this number to solve for x. So if I do that, I get x is equal to 2.7 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. This is what my calculation is estimating the concentration of H plus and F minus to be at equilibrium. Now this is not foolproof, and there are occasions where maybe you can't actually make the assumption. So in order to verify whether or not it was okay to, you want to do the 5% rule. Okay, so the 5% rule. What the 5% rule does is it gives us some kind of verification or validation that it was okay that we made the assumption that we could drop x in our calculation. So what we're looking for is that the x value is less than 5% of the initial value. So if we take a look at our x, it was 2.7 times 10 to the minus 2 molar, and the initial concentration is 1 molar. So what I'm going to do is take that x value, 2.7 times 10 to the minus 2, and I'm going to divide it by the 1 molar. So I can figure out what fraction this is of the whole piece. I'm going to multiply by 100 so that I can get a percent out, and when I do that, I get 2.7%. So this here is less than 5% which means it's okay for me to have made the assumption in my calculation from the ice chart and that I can go ahead and use this number for my next calculation. Okay, so now we've done all of our calculations and we've come to the final value we've been looking for the whole time. The concentration of H plus at equilibrium, which is 2.7 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. So just to recap, we saw that we had a weak acid, so we knew the initial concentration couldn't be equal to the concentration of H plus formed. So we had to use an ice chart to figure it out. In the process of the ice chart, we made the assumption that when we were calculating, X was irrelevant or negligible compared to the initial value. We verified that using the 5% rule, which meant that it's okay to take this value and plug it in. So now that's our final step. So we know that pH, is equal to the negative log of the H plus concentration, which in this case is 2.7 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. So when I solve, I get my pH is equal to 1.57. Remember, this does only have two sig figs, and so does this pH. Any number before the decimal place is not significant, only things after. So this value relevant to pH has two significant figures, just like this value. And that's how you would solve for a weak acid solution.